Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about the Unify Protect video system. I want to cover the pros and cons of it. A lot of people ask about the system since I recently did a review of the Unify newly released NVR, which is a really welcome add-on for it. But, you know, let's talk about the scenarios that work for this system, why you may or may not want it. And I'm going to try to be as objective as possible here to make sure you understand and it may be the right product for you or it may not. And we'll cover those parameters. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. And we'll start right here. Unify Protect, simply scalable video security. Scalable plug and play network camera system, view your live video and recordings anywhere with a free cloud access and mobile applications. Buy in the store now, which brings you to their ecosystem of products. This is the product I recently reviewed, as is this, the Unify Protect Viewport PoE, which is actually what is powering the cameras you see behind me. We just hook it up to a TV, it's got an HDMI out, it's really slick, and matter of fact, it's one of those dead simple devices to use. I really like it. And I'm really liking where they're going with the ecosystem on here. But let's go back to some of the products. So we have the bullet camera. We have this bullet camera for 149, which is a G3 1080. We have this one here for 499, which is a G4 bullet, uh, does 1440. The Pro does 4K for 449. And we have the G3 Pro, uh, which is a very focal, full HD 1080 bullet camera. Then we have the Flex for 79. We have these cool little mini cameras, the Unify Protect G3 Micros. They're actually really cool. Uh, I've never specifically, I don't know if I've specifically reviewed them, um, but they're pretty slick little cameras they have as an option. And the Unify Protect G3 Dome Camera. As far as what you can run these on, you can use a Unify uh, Cloud Key Plus. You can use the recorder, you can use the Unify Dream Machine Pro. And I've got reviews individually on each of these things. But the question I want to answer before we go any further is yes, the Unify system is a very locked in proprietary ecosystem. Therefore, no, you cannot use other cameras on these other devices. So you can't go, hey, can't I buy these less expensive cameras that I found that cost a whole lot less that offer 4K? Uh, no, you can buy those all you want. They're not gonna work with Unify and VRs. I don't foresee that ever changing. What about using these cameras on another system? Uh, well, that's challenging because these support the Unify format and they support the RTSP. And that's where they stop. They, if you uh, want to use some of the other, like, you know, an open uh, OMVIF standard for connecting these to other ways, there's probably some workaround way, hacky way to do it, but they don't natively support it. I've had people mention and try to send me forum posts on it. And I'm like, I, I don't get it. it. Why not just buy a less expensive camera that has a support? So if those are things that are uh, important to you is being able to mix and match or integrate with an existing camera system you have, that's not a feature Unify supports and I don't expect them to support. Now, if you're wondering about running it on your own hardware, that's also a feature not supported. And someone had linked before, well, what about Unify Video? Unify Video is an abandoned product that we had reviewed previously, and that's what introduced us to the Unify cameras. Unify Video was a software that they had that you could run it on your own hardware, build and spec out your own machine, but then, my, then they decided to abandon it. When they abandoned that, they moved over to Protect. But Protect came out long before many devices support it because it Officially, I know someone's like, well, there's a way to get around it and maybe I can figure out how to work it on there. That's not a good way to support things, but yes, there, I, I'm aware that there's forum posts about that as well. As far as officially from the folks over at Ubiquity, their Unify line of Protect devices, as mentioned, um, are the only official things that will run on. And this Unify Protect NVR at a MSRP of only $299 for this. I think that's pretty reasonable for a video recorder that, you know, can record and handle up to 50 cameras. This product, I'm reviewing it because this product exists. This is something I would probably recommend to people because these other ones all had just single drives and that's just a problem. Now, a few things of note. Other 
what may be a problem for you if you don't want to use this software because you're going, hey, what about the AI detection? What about object recognition? Uh, well, no, I don't even see that in a roadmap. And by the way, a device that costs $299 for the recorder, I will tell you, uh, it's just not really powerful. It's powerful enough to do the recording and event notifications and the functions it was designed for. Um, AI takes a little bit more computational power. Matter of fact, exponentially more, depending on how many video feeds you have on there. Most companies sell, and I'm, I'm aware there are ways to do this on-prem, but most large companies and commercial products sell AI and object recognition as part of a subscription because they take care of the computational part of it, not necessarily on-site, but off-site. There are companies that do have on-site servers where you buy a very hefty server that's able to process this, um, but I'm not going to get too far off track. It's just there's a lot of consumer products out there. There's very few that don't have any subscription fees attached to them. And this is where Unify really shines is buy it once and done. This is part of the license fee as far as that goes is why the cameras are generally a little bit more expensive, but I do feel the build quality and the solid nature of the cameras. They're not cheap, but they, they're solid and they haven't been problematic for us for all the ones we've deployed. I'm holding the only camera in the, through almost two years of deploying these, maybe longer than I've ever had go bad. And by the way, we've even dropped a couple of these. I don't know for sure if this is one of the dropped ones or not, but we dropped them and picked them up off the floor and they still worked. And I don't mean drop them from five feet. They were dropped from 10 feet. Highly don't recommend it. Um, we were putting them up and one slipped and my tech completely admitted to it. We plugged it in and it worked perfectly fine. We brought it here back to the office, assuming it was broken. They put an extra spare they had with them, but we're still using it. It still works. The uh, shockingly, um, these have held up really well, and these have, you know, faced the elements, are out in the weather. So um, the ones we installed with the Unify video platform for clients are still out there working away. Back to the other topics on this. So no AI, definitely a disadvantage if you're into that. Uh, no subscriptions, huge advantage. And the final thing I love about the cameras, ease of use. We're going to get into the ease of use of software, but ease of setup. They are brilliant at the way they have these configured. You throw them all, if you all have everything on the same network, I'm gonna at least prerequisite that, you put all the cameras on the same network with the MVR and go. That's kind of it, hit adopt, uh, join all the devices, including things like the device behind me. They made these things really easy, extremely consumer friendly. Now, of course, we're technical and could do highly technical things and configure these and set these up, but it's really nice when you don't have to spend a bunch of labor hours setting up a camera system. Plug them all in, adopt all the cameras, easily name them, done. That is something for the consumer side, especially when I reviewed the RAID array uh, system over here that the Unify NVR has. It's very automatic. And that same premise across the Unify Protect line is outstanding. Also, what about like port mapping and apps? We'll get to the app, which is really nice, but it also doesn't require you to make any special changes to your firewall. They actually have, and it's just, they do a nice job of this. You go to protect.ui.com with your account that you create and you can see that there's no stupid SSL error. You don't see my IP address. If my IP address changes or where the MVR changes, it doesn't matter. It just works. It goes here and can uh, go through and have this URL work wherever you go. It works right here inside my office. It works outside the office. It works when I go home. I can easily do this. And this is one in one with the app. The Unify is using their protect.ui site to basically map everything for you so you don't have to deal with, you know, port forwards and all those other little details. Matter of fact, from a security standpoint, this makes it really easy because now you don't have to worry about, oh, is there a port open that will potentially lead someone to getting into my network and causing a problem? The Unify Protect server calls out to Unify and basically lets itself known there. When you connect your browser to protect.ui.com, you're able to get into the Protect software. These are really nice features because now every time the client, even if they switch internet, if they go, hey, we're going to switch to another provider, we don't go, oh man, we got to map these ports, we got to move things around. Um, also, and kind of related to that, the cameras can change IP addresses on the network. They don't have to be statically mapped. Once they know where the NVR is to talk to on that same network, they're able to send their stream of data over to it, even if they get a different IP address. So uh, those are all the really nice pro features in terms of the system. Now, what about what does the software look like? Well, nice. It's uh, not hard to figure out. So here's all the cameras that we adopted. You can name them. We're going to click on a camera. Little menu pops up here, general, east-facing camera. There we just renamed the camera, apply. 
there's so, oh, I spelled camera wrong, so let's actually delete that out. Apply, that's it. You have these really simple buttons. Uh, they have an extra IR accessory if you want something so it uh, will have better night vision range. We'll show some of the video samples from this. You can overlay time, camera range, the logo, uh, the bit rate. You can show all the frames, frames a second. So if we, uh, we'll bump it up to like 24 frames a second, apply. Now it's recording at that. What about recording? Motion events, always, never. Those options are there. The cameras all have microphones on them. Uh, plus on the motion events, you can tweak the sensitivity and choose a different motion algorithm. Not a lot to it, but it's there. What about zones, motion zones? Yeah, we don't want it recording the street. So there's the street where cars drive by. You don't want that setting it off. You'd like it to set off only when there's motion in the parking lot. So you just drag the zone where you want and it's not any more difficult than that. So we can just do this or adjust it, double click and add. So we, you know, maybe we'll put it right here and raise this one up. You can see how easy this is to do or delete or add multiple zones for the motion. So really straightforward on there. Um, we will actually discard changes. We can add privacy zones. So if there's some spot where perhaps it's looking over someone's shoulder and you don't necessarily want it to always capture what's on the screen, you can add a privacy zone where it'll just block out that particular section. And if you're putting these in in a place where that's an issue, this is something uh, that's a nice feature on there. As far as manage, you can unmanage the camera and you can disable the microphone on the camera if there's, once again, for privacy reasons, you don't want it recording. Really straightforward. Now, what about finding and scrubbing footage? Well, let's go ahead and look at this. By the way, this is being recorded and being uh, streamed back from the uh, Unify NVR, the one I had mentioned and one I did a recent review on. Time lapse is part of that feature where we can do that scrubbing. And you can see the night vision's reasonable on here. It rained the other day, so I'm just scrolling up and down to jump to the emotion events. Now, it's logging when there's actually an event where something happened, like when uh, this guy comes and skates in the parking lot at night. I can jump to those particular pieces of motion. So it's really nice the way it time lapses between there and it does this for each camera. You can jump to a specific date. It's really, I like the way this is because from a time scrubbing standpoint, this is so much easier because now I don't have to go through and try and find each event. Um, this just works and we can, it looks cool especially when it rains because you're like, hey, look at that. Now we can go back and uh, look at the back of the office too. We have what we call the Tesla nan nanny cam. You can go to a live feed of it or we can go to the time lapse and uh, scroll back and forth and watch all the times things happen back here. Hey, look, there's uh, Steve grilling. So we can jump to that and then make sure he's flipping the burgers properly. So pretty straightforward in terms of how all that works and being able to jump to and play each little section of the video. And you can also just go through here to the events themselves, filter it by camera. So we'll say Tesla nanny cam jump to Steve doing the grill right here. And there's Steve getting the burgers ready. Now you can play back the sound if we want. And the sound works. So it picks up a lot of ambient noise, but we've actually found it works pretty good um, overall. So being able to pick out voices. And of course, download. This is great. This is one of the things that not all the cameras support in terms of other systems I've dealt with. Too many of them have these weird converter softwares and it's always annoyed me. This is standard MP4. This is completely playback software that I got the full video. Here it is with the sound, with the audio, nice, crispy, clear 4K video I just downloaded. And you know, with the audio, I can upload this to wherever I need to. If I need to share this even on social media, hey, did you see this person who might've done this thing? They've done such a nice job on that. Now, as far as how the updates go um, and such as well, I will cover that all the way down here when we go over here to the settings of it. Automatic updates is amazing. It's just does it. I've been using this for a while and we've yet to have a single automatic update break it. It does the update. If there's a firmware update for the cameras, it pushes those too. It goes back to that whole simplicity thing that Unify is really focused on. And I think they just did a great job on where I don't have to really think about it. We turn these over to people and when we set these up for some customers, we don't have a ton of Unify Protects deployed, not very many of them. Mostly we've done some consulting with people who've called in and we've helped them, you know, configure things or configure their networks or configure a LAN that has this on there. And many of them seem to feel the same way we do. Like this is just simple. It may not have the most features compared to other systems, but in terms of simple, it 
is exactly that. Now, the last thing let's talk about is the app. How does the app look on there? How usable is the app? And does it work well? Well, we're going to actually switch to it on my phone here. So I'll show you the app on the phone, which has most of the same functionality that we have with the uh, web interface. So once you connect to the MVR, you can see the cameras just like you could there. You can touch any one camera, see the motion events. Matter of fact, the timeline scrubbing works very similar. You just slide your finger back and forth and you can jump to the different events. Then you can play individual events back just by touching them. We'll go back and look at the one in the back here. And we'll go to at least probably where's a motion. There we go, Steve back on the grill. And we can just play back that particular event. You can't get much more simplistic than that from a, from a standpoint of usability. Now, all the other functionality in here, we can choose if you have more than one NVR adopted for different locations, you can hit the pull down and it will show each one of them on there. So we have these, this is all of our demo accounts and our main account for the NVR, the UDM Pro, and this one, it just shows them offline. Once again, no mapping I had to do, no actual uh, setup had to be configured in terms of like mapping ports, mapping firewalls. You register them with your Unify account and they show up. Now, one other thing you can do here is set up notifications. You can have it have alerts set on here so you can enable alerts and it gives you very detailed options. These are options you can control both inside the app on the phone and on the system directly as far as how the alerts go. Now, interesting thing about the alerts is when you're doing these and it does have multi-user options that you can do, when you're setting up all these alerts, you can get kind of fine-grained as you've seen as the options there and they're geofence. You can have, you set up the geolocation of the system and you can have it alert you only when you're X amount of feet or some radius away from the system, which is kind of nice because that adds a level of automation where you go, hey, when I'm this close to it with the app, don't send me the alerts because I'm home. When I'm not home or away from wherever I have the MVR installed, um, the app can be sensitive to that and go, oh, okay, you're not there, so we should send you an alert when there's a motion. So it does have a decent amount of customizability. They keep adding more features and it keeps getting better. Overall, though, I'll rate the reliability on them as wonderful. The Unify NVR we have is the newest product, but when we were using it on this cloud key for a while, the never had a problem. It's uh, survived all the updates. It pushed new firmware to all the cameras and never had any issues. So my overall feelings are I really like it as long as it fits your use case. As long as you're going, I don't need AI. I don't want to pay subscriptions. Um, and I like it's a really simple, easy to use that, you know, I can add a couple of users, add my friends and family, whoever it is that you want to share, you know, maybe, maybe other members of your business, other members of your family that you want to have this as a home surveillance system. I think it's good for that. If you have those really advanced use case and you you know want a uh, system that's really flexible and you can have all kinds of extra home automation integration with and things like that, this system really isn't it. Um, right now, based on what they offer, I don't see any of that. I don't have a roadmap if they'll offer that in the future. But my overall, I'm very positive about the system because, well, it just works. And sometimes that's important. And being able to hand uh, end users something, an app, they can just go on their phone, scroll through, jump to an event without calling you, without having a you know, challenge of finding something on their system, that means quite a bit. So I think that's an important feature of it is that it's easy for the end user. And when we've shown people how to use the app, they go, oh, that's it. I thought it would require like a degree. <laughs> is that always the joke people like to make? But the simplicity of it, I think is really good. I'll leave links to the Unify Protect uh, reviews I've done before down in the description below to some of the other devices, some of the cameras I've reviewed. So you can make you know, a more educated assessment of it. I'll leave a link to the Unify NVR. And of course, the as we refer to it, the Magic Video Tube, but the other you know on-screen display device, which is really cool that you can do that. It's another nice feature if you want to put it up somewhere. I've talked about that. So I think it's a good ecosystem. I think it's a pretty good product. If it fits for you, use it. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.